<laughs> ah, we was created for a purpose. Praise yes, the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. We was created to make his praise glorious. Yes. So you got to know, number one, who you are. You got to know from where you come from. You got to know why you're here. You got to know what you can do. And you got to know where you're going. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because if there's a creation, there has to be a creator. And as a creator, we was created with a purpose. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And we're not just come here, you know, and go through life and, you know, get a job, get a family and eat fried chicken. We was created for more than that. Praise the Lord. There's nothing wrong with having a family, having a job, and definitely nothing wrong with eating fried chicken. But I tell you, it's, it's more than that. We was created for praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Bible says, let everything that has breath. See, everything that has breath, what? Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. You say, well, how do I know whether I have breath or not? Well, what you do is just take your little mirror and put it under your nose. All right? And if it clogs up, it, it fouls up, it, it lets you know you still have breath. All right? But but if, if for some reason you put them in your nose and it don't clog up with seven years and all, you know, uh, we just say it's good to know you will see on the other side. Praise the Lord. But I believe everybody came, you walked in this morning, right? No one had to help anybody here. Praise the Lord. We woke up this morning with our mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Old people said, listen, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus, stayed on the Lord. I was clothed in my right mind. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And I think that this is the day that the Lord has made. And guess what? We've come to do what? To rejoice and to be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you. We glorify your name that we were created to make praise unto you, Father God. Hallelujah. And perfected praise. Praise the Lord. Because of what you've done. We give thanks unto you. The Bible says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For you are good. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures unto all generations. And so we're so grateful to be here in your presence one more time. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you are the glory and the lifter of our heads today. Hallelujah, Father God. We cry unto you. you. You heard us out of your holy hill. Praise the Lord. And we thank you, Father. We glorify you. Now, Father God, we thank you for your presence here today. We thank you, Father God, that you don't have to move. You've already moved. But well, we just move in you, Father God. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father God, that you are good. And we're glad we're in your presence one more time. So, Father, as always, thank you for mind. Speak to our vocal cords. And we speak words, Father God, that will bless the touches. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Again, good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So good to see you this morning. So glad to thank God has blessed you so much and that the Spirit of the Lord is here today. Thank God for the praise and worship and we're just uh, related to be in God's presence one more time to all of our first time guests. We want to thank you for being a part of our worship experience today and, and praise that God will have a blessing for you in the name of Jesus. To all of our Facebook family, uh, Facebook Live, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. For being a part of our worship service uh, that we have taken out your busy schedule and we want you to go in and hit like and hit share hit like and hit share and uh, again if you're watching by delayed broadcast thank you again for being a part of our worship experience that god is doing in the name of jesus so again if you're watching by facebook live go ahead and hit like and hit share hit like and hit share and uh, it's still not too late to contact you know all those family members and let them know that house of faith christian center that we are live and we're on the air praise the lord and uh, you know those family members are mama them Daddy them, baby brother them, baby sister them, Shaquita them, Pookie them, all the M's. Contact them, let them know how to pay Christian Center that we on the air. And thank you again for watching the broadcast. So again, go ahead and like and hit share in the name of Jesus. We're going to have an awesome time in the Word today. So I pray you go ahead and you got your Bibles out, whether it's on printed text or whether it's on your phone, your iPhone, your iPad, your iPod, your iRun, wherever the Word of God is. And uh, it's going to be a truly blessing today. Again, you want to go ahead and hit, hit uh, some pens and paper and highlight and prepare and take good copious notes because the Word's going to be so good in the name of Jesus. Anybody glad 
be here today, God. Yes. So much yes. 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 God is glad. Yes. I am glad. Praise the Lord. Glory yes. to God. You know, people say, Pastor, I'm glad to see you. I say, you know what? It's, it's good to be seen to be viewed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it means that God still has some great things for us to store in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So listen, also you watch us by Facebook Live. Uh, we're going to have Holy Communion at the end of the service. And so you want to go in and get uh, your elements, get your juice and crackers and uh, be prepared for that because we're going to have a wonderful time in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So again, thank you again for being part of our broadcast at House of Faith Christian Center. And we come on every Sunday morning just to take the time and preach. God has a such a blessing. And I'm like, again, uh, my late spiritual great-grandfather, or Dr. Oral Robinson, saying, we believe something good is going to happen to you today. Amen. Hallelujah. If you got a heart to receive, praise Lord, you can receive the things of the Lord. So let's go ahead and get right into this word of God's good. So again, you go ahead and get your Bibles out, and we're going to go ahead and make this confession of faith. Uh, praise the Lord again, whether it's on printed tech, whether it's on your cell phone, iPhone, iPad, iPod, iRod, wherever it is, the word of God's going to be so good in the name. So let's go ahead and say this from your words. This is my Bible. Is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I, am what it says I, am. I have what it says I have. Yeah, I can do what it says I can do. I am now ready. Ready, ready, ready. To receive the, the dynamic, the powerful, the ever increasing, the, the life changing word, word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I boldly confess, I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess, I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess, after hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. The nice the kingdom, and my kingdom. The nice the power, and my the power. The nice the glory, and my the glory. Forever and ever and ever. For this is my receiving, receiving day in Jesus' day. name. Amen and amen. amen. Again, watch this by Facebook Live. Go ahead and like and share this with our handouts this morning. Praise the Lord again. Uh, this is the first Sunday in October, which is the last quarter of this year, 2022. Praise God. All right. So again, this year, God has given us a theme entitled God's Amazing Favor to You. In 2022, again, we're celebrating 30 years of the gospel of God's grace on this particular day. Our scripture uh, that we have is Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52 in the Amplified, excuse me, American Standard Version. And it reads again, and Jesus kept on increasing in wisdom and stature and favor of God and with man. Praise the Lord. All right. So we see that it was an anointing of increase that was on Jesus' life. Anointing of increase. Anointing of increase that was on Jesus' life. And we believe that same increase that was on Jesus' life is on us as well, that we will continue to increase in wisdom, continue to increase uh, in, in, in wisdom, and continue to increase in favor with God and with men. So today I want to uh, begin on a mini series uh, that we have, and uh, today I will begin in talking about uh, experiencing God's divine favor through faith. Experiencing God's divine favor through faith. And again, listen, you taking a pen and pencil, uh, preparing this to cope this note, underline it's going to be so awesome. And you know, and so we're going to be teaching some things that will be blessed, some of the things you may have heard, some things you've not heard, some things you may be new for the first time, things for clarification. So we go all in. So again, uh, experiencing God's divine favor through faith. And we're going to start very basic and we'll get to some things as well. So again, you want to make sure that you uh, are tuning in and watching this broadcast. And even after that, you can go and watch them on Facebook Live for them over and over and over again. All right? Why? Because scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to talk about experiencing God's divine favor through faith. Now, let me begin by saying this. And this is a very, very important statement. I want you to listen to me now. Everything, everything that works in the kingdom of God, it works by faith. Everything, I don't care what it is. That faith is the basis, the foundation. If things are going to work in the kingdom of God, and Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God, it's going to work faith through faith. 
all right? And so if you don't see things working in your life, if you don't see things working, you know, uh, in your finances, if you don't see things working in your family, if you don't see things working in your body, then so far it's time to look at basically your faith. All right. So again, we want to share with you experiencing God's divine favor through faith. Now, our introduction says this, that faith is a word that has many, many diverse meanings. You see, this word faith, what it is, it's an assurance, uh, it, 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 it's a confirmation. And I like the way the Hebrew, uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, put it up in the Amplified Version, it, it can, it's called it a title deed. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and, and, and it says this. It says, notice, now faith is. See, now faith is. Now notice the word faith is sandwiched between two words, now and is. Now is what? Present tense. Is is what? Present tense. So it means faith is always present. All right? So now faith is what? This way, faith is the confirmation. If I say confirmation, confirmation. faith is a confirmation. confirmation. It, 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 faith is it, it, it's a confirmation. You know, when you go out of town, you 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 you, you uh, 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 maybe make a reservation before you get there. All right, and and you get on the phone. You say, "I'm coming to a city here, and I need to make a hotel reservations for that one." And so, uh, okay, and then you know you pay your car or whatever way you're gonna pay. And then what they do is they give you a confirmation number, all right? And that confirmation number is for you there. So that means that once you get to the hotel, see, your room is, is there for you. It, it, you pay for it and you have it. So if you ever get to a point where something says, says well, we don't have record of you ever making a reservation, I said, wait just a minute, I've got something here. To show me it's right, why? Because I've got my confirmation number, right? So that means that you pay for it, they gotta get a room from somewhere for you. Somewhere. Even if it means somebody gotta get put out. All right? Even if, even if they gotta be on an extra room on the hotel, it don't matter. You listen, you know, you may you listen, you may pay for a two two-star hotel that you have, and they say the only thing we got ready is a five-star, you know, room for you. I said, hey, I'll take it. They say, we don't have a regular room, but we do have a suite, you know. I said, I'll take it, all right? Because I paid something, and it's your responsibility to make sure I've got my room. That's my confirmation. That's what faith is. It's confirming something. It is the title deed. The title deed. See, when you get a car, and 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 and, and uh, if you pay for it cash, they give you the title deed of that. Or if you get in a house, and once you pay for a house, and once you make the final payment, see they give you the deed to your house. So until that time that happens, you really don't own the house. The bank owns the house, mm -hmm. huh? Now you live there. They let you live there until you make all the payments. And then once you make the payments, then what they do to show you own it now? You have now the deed to that house. Well, that's what faith is. Faith is your title deed to some things. Faith is what? It is the title deed. It is the assurance that you have of a thing, if I say things. Faith. So faith is not just some abstract stuff. There are some things we are hoping for. Mm -hmm. See, hope takes you in the future. Yeah. But faith says, I have it right now with the evidence I don't see it. Well, how you know what? Because I got a confirmation. <laughs> I got the title of deed that it's mine. That's what faith is. So it's a hope for what? Being proof of the things we do not see. Mm -hmm. But the conviction or being convinced of the reality, faith perceiving as real facts. <laughs> what is not revealed to your senses. Sometimes people say, well, Pastor, it don't make sense. I say, yeah, it makes faith. <laughs> because there's some things with faith, praise the Lord, it just don't make sense to your senses. Yeah. You can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't touch it, you can't taste it. But guess what? You know it's yours. Why? Because you have a title deed to that. So, the word faith is mentioned, did you realize over 160 times? Just in the New Testament? But we must realize, and here's something key, you want to underline this. 
we must realize that the key to understanding faith is not the faith itself, but by what or who faith is in. Hallelujah. And we're going to talk more about this. You see, we place our faith in the God of the universe, in his son Jesus, who is our creator, who is our author, who is our finisher of our faith. We place our faith in the God, in his love, in his wisdom, in his presence, in his power, in his protection, and in his promises. That's what our faith is. That's why we have this assurance. We have the assurance what God says is going to come to pass. We have assurance of who God is. We have assurance, a praise the Lord, of the confirmation, the title deed of the thing. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. If I say amen. 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 Now listen. As believers, we must continue to apply God's promises to our situation and then commit ourselves to him. Therefore, we must choose to step out in faith and to trust him. Pastor, why do you have faith? Because God said That's all I need. Pastor, why do you have faith? I said, because, see, that's my assurance. When God says, listen, that's my conviction. When God says something, that's my confirmation of it. When God says something, guess what? That's my title. Hallelujah. So again, spiritual God's divine faith, favor through faith. Hallelujah. Now, today I want to just go ahead and give more of an introduction to this part and we'll get to a deeper thing. But today I want to make it very, very simple because the one, this way, it, it's got to start from right here. And we're going to go over some things that people may have heard something, thought from it, and get the record straight what the Word of God says. So today we want to talk about experiencing God's divine favor through saving faith. If I say saving faith. Saving faith. Now, uh, it, it's interesting because, you know, sometimes people will say, well, why do I need to be saved? Or, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know I was lost. How many of you heard people say this? Well, you know, I'm a good person. I, I don't hurt anybody. I mean, I, I, I try to do the right thing. I, you know, I try to uh, help everybody. I mean, I, I give to this organization, and you know, and uh, so why should I be saved? I'm not my own business. Why should I be saved? You know, and uh, uh, I remember one time I uh, uh, went to the uh, uh, store, and uh, I bought some items, and uh, there was a young lady that was uh, checking me out. And when she finished, I said, ma'am, excuse me, I said, there are only two types of people who are allowed to check me out. I said, only two types of people. And I said, they are, number one, people who are saved or people who are about to be. Which one are you? And she says, oh, I'm saved. And our faces lit up, and, you know, and I said, praise the Lord. Thank you, my sister. And then went to my wedding, I, I, I went to a restaurant and uh, ordered some things, you know, and a server came, and I said, ma'am, there's only two types of people that are allowed to wait on me. Uh -huh. I said, those who are saved and those who are about to be. And, uh, you know, I said, which one are you? You know, and uh, she did a little, little puzzle and whatever and so forth and all and all and all. I said, well, we talk to you later, praise the Lord. See, you, you got to be real with people. And you got to make it so plain that people understand. So, Pastor, I have a difficult time in sharing. I said, well, just ask people. There's only two people. I go to dry cleaners. I said, there's only two types of people I allow to dry my clothes. Who are those? 
those who are saved and those who are about to be. <laughs> you see how simple it is? It's simple. I mean, that, there's only two types of people, you know, that are allowed to do whatever. Who is that? Those who are saved and those who are about to be. And see, those who are saved, oh my goodness, see, they got a big old spread on their face. You know? But those, when I say oh, they're not saved and I say they're about to be, they're like, oh, where are we going right here, you know? And so yeah. So I want to talk again about uh, experiencing God's divine favor through saving faith. And, and, and it cannot just be a good person. Can I just love my wife, love my husband, love my children, have a good job, you know, uh, do all these things? Is that good enough for God? So let's look at the scriptures. It says, before saving, before discussing saving faith, everybody say saving faith. Saving faith. So when we talk about the different types of faith, so the nature, but they're just on saving faith. Yes. What does it mean to really truly be saved according to the Bible? Not according to religion, not according to church tradition, not according to denomination, according to the word of God, what saving faith is all about, all right? See, it is vital to, to know what the Bible says about us without Jesus. What does the Bible say about without Jesus? Now, when I say without Jesus, I'm talking about without knowing who Jesus is, what he said, what he taught, and what he commanded, what he gave himself on the cross. See, without that, what does the Bible say about us? Not what the Bible says about you. What does it say about us without Jesus? Let's look at the scripture. Number one. The first thing the Bible says about us is without Jesus, none of us are righteous. None of us. Look in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through verse 12. Not none. Without Jesus. I don't care who they are. I don't care how much money they give. I don't care how sweet they are. They get the sweetest person I have. It don't matter. Without Jesus, the Bible says, none of us, I don't care who it is, are righteous. Okay? Now, this is not believing dog. You got to believe in who he is, what he said, what he taught, what he commanded, and what he did from the cross. See, without that, none of us. Look at the Bible says. He says that scripture says, no one, everybody say no one. No one. See, no one is righteous, not even one. Was she the sweetest person to ever say no without Jesus? They're not. They ain't heard anybody. No, without Jesus. Oh, they came to charity. They made they made cookies. They, 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 they did all these things. Okay, yeah, that's going to the world. But going to the Bible, no one is righteous. Zero sin. He says, no one is truly wise, no one is seeking God, all have turned away, all have become, listen to the Bible says, useless. No one does good, not a single one. So the next time you talk to a person and they say, well, I'm a good person, I said, who's saying yours or God? Well, in God's sight, I said, no, what the Bible says. So either I'm going to believe you or believe the Bible. All right? So, what it means no one's righteous, okay? These three things. Number one, no one is righteous in their character. Number one, without Jesus, you're not righteous in your character. Well, they don't tell lies, we tell you, you've never told not one lie in your life. Not one? Well, no, you just lied right there. <laughs> You just lied right there. You never took something, not one time, it didn't belong to you. Not one time. Yeah. Because see, see, here's the thing, people think. And I talk to people, people say, well, you know what? I believe that God uh, grades us on a scale. And I believe that, you see, in the end, if you do more good things than you do bad things, then God will let you in. I think you can find a scripture for that. Have y'all heard that before? Yeah. Uh, it's a scale. If you do more good things, God will look at the good things and the bad things. Okay. I said, find me a scripture. I said, scripture says no one. I don't care you. Okay. I mean, listen, you've done 999,000 good things, but you did one thing wrong, that one thing will be coming against you. 
Because James says, listen, whoever can keep the whole law and offend in one point, you are guilty of them all. So number one, without Jesus, you are not righteous in your character. Number two, without Jesus, you're not righteous in your conversation. You ever said something to somebody you shouldn't have said? Your conversation? Well, I didn't say it. I thought it was just bad. Mm -hmm. Why is that? I said, because Jesus says over the dumpster, he said, whoever should look upon a man in lust in his own eyes, he says, he, he, he's just my resentment. So he's the thought. So I, know, I want to help you because, again, you'll come to people who say, well, I'm not a bad person. But without Jesus, even in your conversations that you have, talking about stuff you shouldn't be talking about. When it's time to be silent, you're talking. When it's time to be talking, you're silent. Hello? None is righteous in their conversation. And then number three, none is righteous in their conduct. You ever did something you shouldn't have done before? I have. You know, I have. Yeah. We all. In, in your heaven, if you have done something you shouldn't have done, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Now, if you don't raise your hand, we'll have an altar call for all nine spirits in here. <laughs> We've all done. So without Jesus, you are not righteous, number one, in your character. Number two, you're not righteous in your conversation. And number three, you're not righteous in your conduct. Without Jesus. So no one is righteous, just number one. So we talk about same faith, you gotta understand. I have to admit there's something wrong with me. I have to admit there's some things that I need to work on. I have to admit without Jesus, there's some things I need to get together for myself without Jesus. And I've been trying, and I've been trying, and I've been trying, and that's the problem. You've been trying on yourself, and you cannot do it. I don't care who you are. Can't do it. That's number one. Number two. Because of that, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23. All of us. And this word come short of glory of God, it means all of us, we have missed the mark in some type of way. It says for everyone, everybody say everyone. The Bible says it doesn't leave anybody out. Talking about me. Everyone without Jesus listen, have sinned and we have all sinned fall short of God's glorious standard. See, God has a standard up here. And without Jesus, we all come short of that. We come short in our conduct, we come short in our character, and we come short in our conversations. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We miss the mark. It's like, uh, you ever uh, see people take target practice? Either, you know, with a gun, they go to the gun range or something, and, you know, they see the target here, and they start shooting at the target through there, or they take a bow and arrow, and they pull it back, and they try to hit the target. And unless it hit bullseye, unless it hit bullseye, they don't a perfect score. So that means all of us, we have missed the mark. All of us have come time where we fell short. All of us have come time, listen to me now, where we didn't hit the bullseye. Every time, I'm talking about every time, every time in our conversation, every time in our character, every time in our conduct, we've all come short. We didn't measure up, notice, not to man's standard, to God's standard. So when people say, I'm a good person, I say, according to whose standards? Well, I, I'm just, you know, and you know, you know, when you talk to people, you know, they always like to compare themselves to somebody worse than they are. But I don't do this like somebody else do it. It's like, okay, and we're not trying to go with somebody else's standard. We're going to God's standard. Everybody say God's standard. God's standard. We don't measure up. We come short without Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then third is this. There he is. Listen to me now. There is a severe consequence for our sin, for us missing the mark, for us coming short. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Just want to go over this, you know, because again, you hear so much going on in the world today about trying to be a good person, trying to do the right thing, you know, 
you know, trying to measure up. See, in God's standard, God ain't looking at that. That's man talk. It says, notice, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the wages is your spiritual paycheck. Whether you get a salary or whether you get paid by the hour, whether you get paid commission, you, 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 you have a job, you get some more, you get a wage. If you're an hourly worker, that's an hourly wage that you get. All right? You get paid. And then at the end of the week or two weeks, one month, you get your paycheck. What's your paycheck? It's based on the hours that you work and the the, the hours that you get paid per dollar. So, so if you make twenty dollars, you know, an hour, and you work, you know, ten hours a day, that's two hundred dollars at the end of the week, five days a week, you know, that's a thousand dollars. See, so you get paid a thousand dollars based on the work that you work and the hours. So the Bible says the wages or your paycheck. At the end of the week, for you not measuring up to God's standard in your conduct, in your conversation, in your character, your wage is death. Spiritual death. The word death means separation. You are separated from God because you cannot measure up to God's standards in who you are, what you say, and what you do without Jesus. I, 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 I gotta say this, come here, why do I need teaching? Why do I need to come to church here about Jesus? To show you that without him you can't measure up. Now the world will pat you on the back, the world will say you the greatest things since sliced bread, the world will, will and give you accolades and give you trophies and give you plaques and give you all these things and so forth and all. That's good to the world standard, but we don't live our lives based on the world standards, we live our lives based on God's standard. And your Bible says your paycheck for not measuring up is spiritual death separated from God. But the good news is eternal life. Now notice what it says here. People, and I want you to understand this. People, please underline this or highlight this. People are not sinners because they sin. They sin because they are sinners. Read that again. Let them think in. Underline this, highlight it again. People are not sinners because they sin. They sin because they are sinners. So let's read them. When Adam, who was the first man, sinned in the Garden of Eden, when he ate of the forbidden fruit, God says, every tree of the, this in this garden you must eat of this but the tree of the fruit the fruit of the tree of the good and knowledge you shall not eat of it for in the day that you eat of it you shall die the hebrew means you shall die dying in other words you will start a dying process going on inside of you why because you disobeyed me and adam is the representative man so when he ate listen to me now of that forbidden fruit this sin issue, listen, what happened is, it caused a wide gap between God and man. Because before then, God and man was in constant fellowship all the time. God talked to man, man listened. Man talked to God, and God listened. They fellowshiped together all the time. They hung out together. They were one. But when man, Adam, ate of that forbidden fruit. Not only did he fall, but he created a wide gap, a wide chasm separating the two. And they could not come together. Now watch this. So every person who is born, mm, 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 they take upon the sin nature of Adam, the first man who sinned. So you have that Adamic nature inside of you. You ever know you never had to teach a child how to lie? You never said, you know what? We're gonna go to line 101. You ever never taught how to teach a child how to steal? You said, why is that? You never had to teach a child how to talk back? 
He's like, I didn't teach you how to talk back. Where did that come from? You know? You know, and they talk back, you know, and sometimes you want to give them back of your ear. You can't do that, all right? All right. <laughs> Never teach them. Why is that? Because they take upon the nature of Adam. Does this make sense? All right? That's when they come in the world. Selfish. All right? Cry down along with them. Just keep on crying. Waiting for you to come pick them up. Where did they get that from? All right? The Adam nature. So that nature has been passed to every person who is born. So that gap between man and God still exists. So God has to find a way to bring, to close the gap and to bring God and man back together. And he tried covenant, he tried prophets, he tried kings, he tried all these things and he did not work. In fact, man got worse. So God had to come on the way to bring him back to man together so they could commune to one another and fellowship with one another. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. And there was only one man who could complete the process. Hallelujah. Who can bring a holy God and a unholy man back together as one. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Therefore, listen now, until that happens, man is eternally lost. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. It means life that starts now, it never ends. And it gets better and better and better. I tell people, this life is the worst hell you'll ever experience. But without Jesus, this life is the best heaven you ever will experience. It'll get worse. What? So, listen to me now. Here it is now. To be saved from eternal damnation or separation, keep that schism, a person must exercise saving faith in Jesus Christ. Because your good works cannot get it done. Your education cannot get it done. Your background cannot get it done. Your status cannot get it done. Just because you had a good mom and a good daddy and a good home, just because they grew up in the church and did all that, that's good. But I want to tell you, my friends, that in itself can get it done. You have to yourself say, I put saving faith in Jesus for myself. Amen. Period. Yes. Now, Three facts about saving faith. And again, I'm gonna make this so simple, we'll get some other things, but I gotta set the foundation. Because there are people going around still thinking they're gonna be saved because they're a good person. They do a lot of good things. They don't read in the Bible. And that's not what the Bible teaches. And that's why he raises up preachers like me and other men and women of God to tell people the truth of what the Bible says. Now what they do with it, that's their own decision. But we at least got to tell them what the truth is. And so you are here today that you're going to take this message and people that you love and people that you care about and people you're concerned about, you're going to give them the truth. How they respond, that's none of your business. So you won't have that on your hands and say, Pastor, I told them the truth, now they got to respond. So when it comes to a time when they got to ask for God, they can simply say, yep, they told me, I just didn't listen. All right? But the last thing I want to do is just say, people that I love and people that I work with, whatsoever, and I never not one time told them the truth of what the Bible says about themselves. So here it is, three saving faith, three things about saving faith. Number one, saving faith is a gift of God which cannot be worked for. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight to verse nine. Verse nine. It's a gift, everybody say a gift. Yes. It says notice. For by grace are 
you saved through faith. See, I'm talking about saving faith. See, everybody say saving faith. Saving faith. Now, grace is God's work. Faith is our responsibility. See, faith takes what grace makes. Faith takes what grace makes. But it's both a gift, watch this. It's not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. How many like to receive gifts? I do. And you know what? When someone gives you a gift, you have one or two decisions. You can either receive it, or guess what? You can refuse it. But well, why would anybody want to refuse a gift of God, the God who created you, the God who loves you, the God who has compassion for you, the God who gives you mercy, the God who wakes you every morning? Why would anybody want to refuse that gift? I don't know. Watch this. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And now people go around. Well, I'm going, I know I'll be saved because I'm a good person. You say, I, I give this organization, I give this charity, I pay my taxes, I do all these things. See, that's your works. And your works is not good enough. Why? Because your works cannot measure up to God's standard. And if it could, think about this. If your works could please God, why would he send Jesus to down the cross for you? I want you to think about that. Why would Jesus give up all the glory, all the splendor, all the majesty in heaven to come down through 42 generations of time, born to a virgin, live, give his life, and then shed his, his blood on the cross to be humiliated, to be embarrassed, to be whipped, to be crucified, do all of that? Why would God do all of that if you can do it yourself? That's why it's a kill. That's why you can't work for it. You can only receive it. Watch this. And this is your assurance. This is your confirmation. This is your title deed. I'm saved not so much because of what I do. I'm saved because what Jesus did for me. He gave his life for me. So that's number one. It's not about works. Now watch this. I don't work to get saved. I work because I am saved. <laughs> you see the difference? See, because I'm now saved, now I will do good works. But I don't do my work to get to be saved. Because saved people will do good works. Same people will come to church. Same people will pray. Same people will read the Bible. Same people will listen to the word of God. That's what same people do. But people who are not saved, you can tell people say that, but I'm trying. Well, I'm just trying. I said, let me ask you a question. Did you try to tie your shoes this morning? I said, did you try to brush your teeth? this morning? Hmm? Did you try to eat your breakfast this morning? No. You can tell people that. I said, you going to work tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. You uh, you going to the church tomorrow? Yeah. You come to church tomorrow? Well, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bring up one time. Just go say you ain't good. <laughs> this girl, I already real friend, I ain't coming to try to please me as I'm trying. You lying? <laughs> girl, this ain't coming. I'll try it all, but that's not what a lie with a dress on. That's all it is. <laughs> Y'all know I'm just bold. I just tell it like this because I love people. And people, listen, people need to stop playing these religious games. Receive the gift. And allow him to do the work in you. Alright? So let's see the mention both. Number two, and I'm almost finished. Saving faith is received by confession and a belief. And I gotta talk about it because this is one of the most misinterpreted scriptures in the Bible. Ephesians chapter. Chapter 10, verse 8, verse 9. Excuse me, Romans, excuse me, Romans chapter 10, verse 8, verse 9. I'm sorry. 
And uh, it says, in fact, the message is very close at heart at hand. It is on your lips and your heart. And the message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be still be saved. I had a guy on Tommy Carrillo uh, came to me one time and said, Falcon, I have a question. Uh, I uh, knew this person and I talked to him about salvation. And uh, this is what they did. They came to me and said, okay, all right, I'll say Jesus is my Lord. He did my Lord. And then, okay, I said it now. I'm going to go back and do what I want to do. I, I say what you want me to say. I say Jesus is my Lord. He saved me. And I'm going to go back and do what I want to do. And Pastor, is that guy saved? I said, well, I'm not the judge of anybody. I don't judge. I said, but if that's all it is, they didn't get it. Because I want you to write these three things down. Because you got to know what's been said, but you got to know what's been implied. All right? It says the message of Jesus, no, it's very close. It's, it, it's in you. See, God is a spirit, and God speaks to our spirit. We are spiritual beings. So that, that, that the spirit of God, it now comes within us. That, that there's something that different now about us. God's spirit is moved within us. All right? It's saying, what is it? It's, notice two words. It's on your lips, and it is in your heart. And that is the very message about faith we preach. So faith has to be two areas. It has to be in your mouth, and it has to be in your heart. Remember what it says faith is. Faith is the assurance. Faith is the confirmation. Faith is the title deed of the things we are hoping for, but the evidence of things we're not seeing. So that faith is in my mouth, and it's in my heart. Now, it says, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, what does that mean? Three things. And I got to make it simple. And if I haven't done it, I apologize. Because I want people to be have saving faith, not some superficial, just trying to say something they think it's going to be. Uh -uh. Number one, when you say that Jesus is your Lord, what you're doing is you are confessing your, you are, excuse me, you are repenting of your sin. Jesus cannot be your Lord if you don't repent of your sin. So for a person who says, I, this, I can say this, but I can do anything I want to, they didn't get it. Because there is no repentance of sin. That means that you've been going one way, and when you repent, I'm going one way, but now when I repent, now in my mind, I turn around and go a different direction. That's what repentance is all about. Repentance is not, I'm feeling sorry, but when I leave here, I'm going to go back and do the same thing. That's not repentance. So I want to help people out. I have people say this all the time. When they say, teach my Lord, but they want to go back and do what they want to do, they didn't get it. Where is the repentance? Yeah. Repentance to God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's always what the Bible teaches. And I don't mind asking people, I said, is Jesus your Lord? Well, yeah, I said, when did you repent of your sin? And watch it. Man, there you go again. Trying to judge me. No, I'm not judging you. I'm just inspecting the fruit on your tree. I'm a fruit inspector. Then you go judging me. <laughs> then you go judging me. I'm not judging you. I'm just looking at the fruit on your tree. And it looks like it's apple. So if it's apple, it must be a apple tree. Because apple tree produces what? Cherry tree produces what? Cherries. So I'm going to sweet just expecting the fruit. And Jesus said, you don't know them. You don't know the tree by the fruit. So I want to know, when did you repent of your sins? 
Well, I didn't do it. Let's do it right now. Are you willing to repent of every sin you've done? Not just saying I'm sorry for the hard call. When you really are, you willing to change your mind, change your direction, and change your ways? Starting right now. And every time that situation comes, you keep saying, I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. I don't care what it is. I don't care. You got to say it a hundred thousand times. I repent of my sin. You keep saying it. And you keep saying it. And you keep believing it. And one day, that stuff won't bother you anymore. Why? Because you truly repent of your sin. But you got to hear it. See, faith comes by hearing. What's going to you hear? You hear, I put faith that Jesus has cleansed me of all my sins. And I repent of my sin. See, you start saying that. You go somewhere you shouldn't be, and you have this funny feeling that's going on, just start saying, I repent of my sins, I repent of my sins. And what's where you end up walking away from that thing. But you keep saying, well, take this one more time, this is one more time on earth, oh, you've been busy about this. Then at one time, turn to five times, 10 times, 20 times. When you start saying with your mouth, I repent of my sin, I repent of this right now, I repent of this before I do it, watch what start happening. You start seeing change. So that's number one. Jesus Lord, I repent my sin. Secondly, watch this. I trust Jesus for my salvation. I don't trust me. I don't trust Ronnie for my salvation. Ronnie can't save Ronnie. Ronnie's not good enough. Ronnie does not meet God's standards. But I trust Jesus for my safety. Well, I just believe in God, so does the devil. The devil's no God. The devils know that God is a creator. Mm -hmm. The devils believe in God. Yes. But do you really think the devils are going to be saved? No. Do you really think the devils are going to heaven? No. If they are, I don't want to go. <laughs> I said, I ain't good enough these rocks from down here. I never get to heaven, they'll come from <laughs> So believe in God or not. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross to save me from the sin. The Bible says, watch this, the Bible says that, that, that uh, his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save them, what? From their sins. He didn't say save them in their sins. He says from their sins. So you start confessing, every time that temptation comes, Jesus, I thank you for saving me from my sin. I trust you for saving me from my sin. I thank you for trusting me for this thing that I feel like doing, and I'm getting the pressure to do it, and I've been doing it over, and I've tried to try. Jesus, I thank you for saving me from my sin from doing this thing. You are my savior. You save me from it. So you start saying it before it happens. So you get around, you know, these little, little friends, you know, like baby, 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 sister. And you say, Jesus, I think you saved me from what baby sister may want to try to do to me. And I'm not going out there tonight. Thank you for saving me. And you all dressed up and ready to go and what it is. And baby sister and baby, baby Ray, they, they never show up. And you mad. Huh, I can't believe they didn't say it. No, it was the Holy Ghost. Working on what you said. Oh, I'll tell somebody I'll be afraid of the Lord. Anything. So number one, I'm trusting Jesus to be my savior. And here's number three. Number three, I submit to him as my Lord. I submit to him as my Lord. Now what's the word Lord? The Lord means master. The Lord means master. Jesus now is my new master. Up to that time, I when I realized that Satan controlled me, Satan dominated me, Satan influenced me. But now I changed master, and now I take upon a new master, Jesus, my Lord. And now Jesus, you're the master. You're the one who controls me now. You're the one I'm living for each and every day right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every time I think about this. Uh, Think about that. That's that we, we got married. This we watched this movie, and it was called The Last Dragon. <laughs> you know, and uh, it was a scene at the end of that. You know, and and uh, you know this guy who was a bad guy, whatever it is. You know, you know he had got the glory, whatever it is, and he was just whooping a good guy, whatever it is. Okay. He says, you know, who's the master? You know. You know, and this guy kept saying, you say show up. And he kept beating. He said, who's the master? 
the guy tell me. He said, you say so nothing. You know, so far. And all of a sudden, this guy came out and he got the glow on him. His glow came up. He said, who's the master? He says, I'm the master. Praise the Lord. Lord. And he, he kicked the show button, button. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> And you got to know in your life who's your master. Yeah. Who controls you? Who influences you? Even when you don't get it right all the time. Even when you say stuff you shouldn't say. Even when you do things you shouldn't do. Even when you think something you do. You got to say, yeah, I know I didn't do that. But guess what? He's still my master. Amen. And he's still controlling me. And he's still working on me. And although it's, I'm not there yet. Although I got some things I need to work on. Although I need to get better. But still, I'm going to confess on this day, he's still my master. Yeah. He's my Lord. And I'm asking him to Lord me in every area of my life. Now that's one thing we're missing as Christians. Because the world says it's a bad habit. The world says you can't stop it. The world says you can't control it. And you can't. But when you, listen my friends, when you say the sincere heart, Jesus, now I've been doing this thing a long time. And this thing is just moving my blood all the time. And I'm tired of it. Jesus, I need for you to Lord me in this area. Yeah. Would you teach would you would you just lower me in this area? Help me. I can't do it by myself. I need your help. I need you to be to master me, to control me, to lead me. I need you to lower me in this particular area. And you start saying that over and over again, what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. Jesus start lowering the area. And that thing that used to control you, you now control me. Amen. I mean I mean, even simple things. I mean, you know, for for, for me, you know, I, it, it, it was just the cookies, because I, I I would eat a whole bag of cookies. And if you had your cookie, I'd take your cookie. You wouldn't look at each other. I mean, I, I was out of control. I had to stop. And I couldn't do it by myself. I kept trolling, eating cookies and cooking so forth. And I kept doing that. And I just had to say, Jesus, I need you to love this area. You know? And 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 and, and he did. And do I still like cookies? Yeah. But cookies don't control me anymore. Amen. It, it, it just don't control me anymore. I, I'll eat, you know. I mean, if I have them, I'll eat. If you don't, that's okay. But it don't control me anymore. Pass me and tell me Jesus will lower me in some simple that Yes. And you find areas in your life, it's none of my business what it is. You know some things in your life that Jesus is not controlling that area. So this is what Jesus, I need you to lower me. We can just do it right now. Would you say this word that makes it Jesus? Jesus. I need for you, need for you. To, Lord me to Lord me in certain areas, in certain areas of my life. Of my life. See, it's so easy, y'all. We make it complicated. And your life becomes better and better. And then when you miss it, don't beat yourself up. You know, Jesus, I missed it. I, I, I forgive me so far. I, I do better. And you find yourself getting better, better, better. That's what's happening. So, my sister, if you confess with your mouth of Jesus, Lord, Watch it. And believe in your heart. Watch it. God raised from the dead, you will be saved. You say, why is that so important? Because this what? If God could raise Jesus from his death, if he had the power and the authority to raise Jesus from his death, yes. show up. Yes. He's got the power. And the ability and authority to raise you from any situation you're going through today. Hallelujah. And when the devil says it's hopeless, when the devil says you'll never make it, you tell the devil, you allow that same God that raised Jesus, he'll raise me up. Yes. Yes. To victory. Yes. To be more than a conqueror. Yes. And instead of stop conquering me, I'm going to conquer it. Yes. Amen. Amen. That thing probably had you in bondage. You tell the devil, bondage, no more. God raised Jesus. I believe he can raise you. My friend, there's hope for you today. Don't never give up on God because he'll never give up on you. Hallelujah. That's saving faith. I can't see it so far, but I know it. That's the assurance. That's the confirmation. That's my title deed. Then third and final, we're going to close up. Saving faith places us in right standing with God. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. 
Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. It says, no, this, this is what the Bible says. Now, this, this, look at this here. It says, yes, everything else is worthless compared with the infinite value of knowing Jesus, notice, my Lord. Yes. My, my master, my controller. He says, for his sake, I have discarded everything else. Count all of this as garbage, rubbish. So that I could gain Christ, the anointed one, his anointing. Watch this. And become one with him. Oh, this is so good, y'all. I no longer count on my own righteousness to obey the law. To do good, get good. Rather, watch this. I become righteous through what? Faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends upon what? Faith. See, not on your faith uh -huh. says, in what he has done, what he says, what he commanded, what he did for me. That's my faith is. Now watch this. I say this, we close off. When Jesus says something, that's his faith. When Jesus did something, that's his faith. Watch this. But when I say what Jesus says, guess what? That's not because of my faith. Yes, hallelujah. When I believe what Jesus did for me, that's not my faith. And the Bible says, guess what? God has made us now right with him. We are one with him. That gap has been closed with him. I have right standing with him. I can do what's right because it's right and do it right because of him. Hallelujah. Not anything I do is because of what he has done. Yes. Amen. And now I can have victory in Jesus Hallelujah. every day. Amen. It's a good day yes. because my faith is in him. My faith stands in Jesus, and I am saved by what Jesus has done for me. And now I have confessed, I have repented of my sins. I now trust Jesus for my Savior, and now I submit to him as my master. And so when now the thing says, who's the master? <laughs> I said, Jesus, he's my master. He must still me. Showing up, Jesus. I like that. Showing up, Jesus. I like that. Say that again, baby. Showing up, Jesus. Showing up, Jesus. I like that. I appreciate that. Showing up, Jesus. Who's the master? Showing up, Jesus. Who saved you? Showing up, Jesus. Who delivered it? Showing up, Jesus. Who went to Calvary? Showing up, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who shed his blood for you? Showing up, Jesus. Who satisfied the judgment of the cross? Showing up, Jesus. Who reconciled man back to God? Showing up, Jesus. Hallelujah. Showing up, Jesus. He's the master. Hallelujah. I ain't gonna remember watching that movie again. Uh, and every time he says, show no one's show no Jesus. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and take our confession. Our five confessions. All right. Four is on the front, one's on the back. Number one, say this, I confess. I confess that because of sin, because of sin I was once separated from God. I was once separated from God. Number two, say, I confess, I confess that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ has, reconciled has reconciled me back to God. Back to God. Number three, say, I confess, I confess that saving faith, that saving faith is, a gift of God, is a gift of God which cannot be worked for. Which is, which cannot be worked Number four, say, I confess, I confess that, saving faith that saving faith is received, is received by, a confession by confession and a belief. And a belief. Turn over, y'all, number five, at the top of number five, say this, I confess. I confess that saving faith, faith places, me places me in right standing, in right standing with, God. with God. Now, this is our prayer of confession. We are afraid of the agreement. And again, the word confession means to be in agreement with that we have. It's not just the saying of our mouth, but we believe it's in our hearts and our spirit that God is speaking to us. So, ready? Let's pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your love and for all your wonderful and powerful promises. Although once I was separated from you, I am thankful that Jesus Christ has reconciled me back to you. I am thankful that your saving faith is a gift which cannot be worked for. It is received by confession and a belief, and it places me in right standing with you. Help me today to put my complete faith and trust in you, and guide and direct me. As I understand this, I realize by faith I will experience God's divine favor through faith in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Now, you watch this broadcast on Facebook or maybe some other social media that we have. I, I laid it out for you what saving faith is all about. It is not based on your works, it's not based on your efforts, it's not based on you being a good person. It's based on what Jesus has already provided for you at Calvary's cross. And remember, I said it's a gift. And it's a gift that I receive. This gift of Jesus. So what are my responsibilities? Number one, I repent of my sins. Number two, I trust Jesus as my Savior alone, not my good works. And number three, I now submit to him as my Lord as my master. And again, as we see it here, who is the master? Show love Jesus. <laughs> so today, would you like to make this show up Jesus your Savior Lord today? It's simple as this. A, B, C. A, I admit I'm a sinner. I deserve to die for my sins. B says, but I believe Jesus died on the cross and he took my place for my sins. And now I confess, I, I trust him. That's, that's, I'm, I'm trusting him as my savior. I, and then C says, now I confess him as my Lord, as my master, and now my master is showing up Jesus. If you've never done that, my friend, you can do that right now, wherever you are. If you're in your car, in your home, in a hotel room, it doesn't matter. See, God hears you, not only what's in your mouth, but he also hears you what's in your heart, in your spirit. And you can do that today. Would you do that today right now? Just take a minute and just ask him, Lord, I repent of all my sins. Repent of my conduct. Repent of my conversation. I even repent of my character. I know people think I'm all this, but in your sight, I'm not all that. I don't measure up to your standard. I want that to change. Would you do that? If there's someone here today, you've never done that before. I want to give you that invitation. Stop trying to be a good person. I can't do it. I'm going to tell you, I tried it. It doesn't work. It's frustrating. I keep saying I'm going to do it. It don't. From the day I made Jesus, so Jesus, you're my new master. You're my new Lord. Things for you to start changing. So if you get a day and you say you've never done, done that before, you want to do that, we'll give you an opportunity to do that. Or maybe say, you know, Pastor, I need a church family. I need a church home. I need a pastor. I need a man and woman of God who's going to stand and tell me the truth in love. Who's not going to condemn me or judge me, but still tell me the truth in love. I need a pastor. I need a church. I want to recommend the House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. It's located in Smyrna, Tennessee. Where we preach Jesus is Lord. That's what we just do. In a way that you can understand it. In a way that you can apply it to your daily life. So we need that, praise the Lord. If you watch this broadcast and you want to hook up with us, see there's a number that you can call us. That phone number there is from 615-223-0420. And call that number and leave a message, leave your phone number, leave an email message, and someone from our ministerial staff will get back in contact with you. And we'll tell you next directions. But here's again, if you're gonna be a believer, you need to be a belonger. You need to belong to the church. If there's anyone here today, like need to have salvation or, or receive Jesus is your Lord and Savior, or you know, you'll be a part of his church. Then you would you raise your hand today? Would you get saved? You know? okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. But Brian, I just want to pray for you right now as much as Father, thank you for those who've heard this word. Even those, Father God, who've already saved, but they need to take this word to someone they know who is not saved. 
maybe a family member, maybe a friend, maybe a coworker, maybe uh, someone they they know a long time, and you know they just use this stuff. Well, I'm not a good, I'm a good person, and I'll try to do better. And we now can take to them the truth of your word, and their lives can be transformed. Thank you, Father God, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. And we thank and honor you. Thank you for the word, Father God. We sown seeds, Father God, and you'll bring the harvest and the increase. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, we're going to go ahead and we're going to receive the Lord's Supper right now. And uh, this is the part here where we have communion. We have fellowship with Jesus. We come to the Lord's table. So if you receive Jesus Christ, your first Lord and Savior, I want you to go ahead and share with us. You watch this broadcast. We're your home. You go ahead and get your elements, get your juice, get your crackers. And we're just the bread, monster bread, whatever. And we're fellowship with the Lord. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in the night which Jesus betrayed, he took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he blessed it and said, Take, eat this is my body, which was broken for you. He says, As often as you do this, watch this, do this in remembrance of me. See, we remember Jesus, not us, not our faults, not our shortcomings. We remember him, what he had done. Then he said, Lay for the truth. He says, Now this is my blood, which was shed. So his back side was whipped, it was marred. All those things happened. He was punched in the face. All those things. His beard was plucked off. All that kind of stuff. He did because of love. His body went through all of that. It was more because of love. And his blood was shed. So the blood satisfied the judgment. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or forgiveness of sins. So how about sins can be given through the blood of Jesus? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's face. And sinners plunge beneath the blood. What happens? They lose all of their good things. That's what the blood of Jesus does. I put faith in the blood. I plead through faith the blood of Jesus. The cleansing power. So when we partake of this juice and this bread, we're in communion and fellowship and with him through our faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so I want to thank you, those who are preparing to, to receive this holy communion. It's holy because it's the oneness of God through Jesus. And the Holy Spirit makes it all possible that we have in Jesus. stripes we have been healed. So you are healed through the precious blood of Jesus, through the book of of Jesus. Let us eat. And now we drink the blood of Jesus, the body, the blood of Jesus. For forgiveness of our sins, let us drink. In Jesus' name. Father, let thank you for the wonders, this wholeness you provided for us. Give you praise in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. 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 So thank you so kindly for fellowship with us and Holy Communion, and uh, we know truly you'll be blessed because of your faith in what Jesus has already done. Remember, when Jesus says something and did something, that's His faith. When we say and believe what Jesus has said, now that's our faith, and that's the faith that pleased God, and we are saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this we're going to continue up in worship the Lord. It is now our opportunity for prosperity. Praise the Lord. And so we have an opportunity to sow as God has blessed us and to sow in the kingdom of God. Uh, praise the Lord. And uh, so if you need an offering on the Lord, we'll go ahead and share that with you. And uh, we call it an opportunity because, again, this is an opportunity. We believe the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, glory to God, as long as the earth remains, See, seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. And so we're just sowing, this is we're not giving money. We're sowing seeds into the kingdom of God. And you know what? You cannot have a harvest unless you have seed. Believe me, if you eat that corn on the cob, it's there because someone sowed some seed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Any offer of praise, Lord? Yeah. 
You know, you eat, you eat those tomatoes, you eat the bed, you know why? Because someone just soaks some tomato seeds. See, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. So what we're doing, we're just sowing seeds. And we're believing God for the harvest. How God gives you a harvest, I don't know. But you believe in God for your harvest. You know, it could be a spiritual harvest. It could be a social harvest. It could be a financial harvest. It could be a job harvest. It could be a relationship harvest. You know, it could be a healing harvest. I don't know. God knows. And remember, the seeds that you sow, it never leaves the earth. Never. Yes, and here in House of Faith, so you're not just giving money to the church. You're sowing seeds in the kingdom of God. And that's your faith. You exercise your faith. When you give and your tithes and offerings, it's an exercising of your faith. It is your assurance. It is your confirmation. It is your title deed that you have what you believe in God for. Praise the Lord. And so again, we love to sow seeds. We love to give God's money. Because we know that the Bible says, you shall reap what you sow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your time seeds is very good. Just being here today, hearing this word, that's the seed that you're sowing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so again, you're making our checks. You, you watch us by Facebook Live, three ways you give through text giving that you have. Uh, you can follow the information there. Uh, if you're going through our, our, uh, our website, houseoffaithchristiancenter.org, just go ahead there and follow the directions. Finally, it says give, finally, it says donate. And then just put in that you have, use your credit card, and you can use uh, your debit card, or whatever you like to give. There's no pressure whatsoever. You know, we don't do that. But it says whatever God speaks in your heart that you want to do, that's what you do. Whatever Jesus says to do, you do. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No pressure whatsoever. Now, will that the Bible says, if you give sparingly, you're going to receive sparingly. But if you give bountifully, you shall receive bountifully. So every man purpose in his heart, so you let the Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Or you want to give, you know, say, can I give them checks, the money? Well, yes, you can. See, that address is House of Faith Christian Center. Post Office Box 985, Smyrna, Tennessee, zip code 37167. Yeah. We take checks, praise the Lord. Now make sure you sign them. Glory to God. And uh, if you want to send a blank check, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Uh, we, we'll help you put it in. <laughs> You're going to say, I want to praise the Lord. Just get, make sure you got it covered, all right? So we'll do that. So whatever way, make sure it's there. And uh, we will check out that for you. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. God so loved the world that he did. So let's, we're going to go ahead and hold our offer right now. We're going to pray for your offer because this represents you. This is a part of you. you. You have jobs, you have businesses, you work hard during this. And so you're giving a part of yourself to the kingdom of God in your soul. So we're going to pray over your offer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we love you. Thank you, Father God, for this gift that you've given us through Jesus. Thank you for salvation, saving faith that we have, Father. And so, Father, we thank you that now as people who are saved, we love to give. We love to sow back into the kingdom of God. And, Father, God, we're thanking you, first of all, for our own salvation, that we we are saved today. But, Father God, there are family members that we know, there are loved ones, there are friends that we know, that right now have never come to the stop saving knowledge of Jesus. And so we're saving, we're sowing, Father God, for their salvation. We believe Father God, you're going to raise up men, women, boys, and girls to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they will exercise our saving faith. And so we thank you, we decree it, and we believe in God you for so much, but you are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, glory to God. Thank you so kindly uh, for, for being able to receive our offerings that we have in Jesus' name. We appreciate that. We love you so very, very much. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, listen. Thank you so kind. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Oh, Lord, we got some great swords here. That house of faith. Praise the Lord. Got some great souls who are sowing online. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We will make every opportunity available for you to sow in the name of Jesus. Well, listen, we've had an awesome time here at the House of Faith Christian Center. I want to thank each one of you for being on Facebook Live, for, 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 for uh, being part of the service and worship service and all the things that you have in store for us. And it's been so awesome. And we praise God for you. And again, uh, uh, let you know we come on every Sunday morning. 
every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you over in Congo, then praise the Lord at 3.30. We want to appreciate that as well. Here, we got an offering over here. Glory to God, we're going to miss that as well. So again, thank you for being a part of this worship experience and all the things you have doing. So again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. Here at House of Faith Christian Center, we have a free bow vision that is to exalt the Savior, equip the saints, and evangelize the sinner. House of Faith Christian Center, again, we have five purposes. They are evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. House of Faith Christian Center, we are ministers of excellence, effectiveness, and encouragement. Again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, located in Utah Spring, Tennessee. And I want to leave with you these very, very familiar words. Remember that Jesus is Lord and continue to show compassion in your actions. And we'll see you next time. God bless you and have a great day. Bye-bye.